You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Oh, yeah. Yep. I had to start off with some Avenged. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is a wacka, 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 wacka doodle Wednesday. And man, oh, man, has this month started off with a bang, quite literally. As a matter of fact, y'all are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, channel 3, also on the RLM Radio.xyz side and lots of other RLM places, including the RLM Spreaker channel. And yeah, I started off with a little bit of Avenge Sevenfold and critical acclaim and them fucking self-righteous bastards out there. Oh, yeah, my brain is kind of sort of fried. Kind of sort of fried, but that's okay. (laughs) By the way, didn't even make it six minutes in, and I had several F-bombs with the intro and with me. So there you go. Okay, let's go take a peek over here on Fakey Book real fast. See who's over here. I do know the lovely Miri B is over here. Hey, B, how you doing? I also see Lisa B, and yes, my dear, I am sending out prayers to Greg Comer. Bless his heart, battling with cancer. There's an awful lot of people out there with cancer of late. I keep hearing about it, and it's like, damn it. Quit infecting us, you ass munches. Okay, let's go look over here in the corner pocket. I see sock puppets over here, as well as I be Don C. Not real sure who else is over here, but hey, I got a ding-a-ling going on. Maybe I didn't turn my volume down enough. Let me go check that shit out. (laughs) I I kind of sort of got sidetracked today. I know, shock, shock, shock. Having to deal with cranky people today. It is something in the air, I got to tell you. Uh, and y'all better stop this crankiness because I tell you what, you want to get me cranky, that will not be pretty. Just warning ya. Okay, oh, thank you ever so much, Barman and RLM Radio, for tweeting me over there on Twitter. I truly do appreciate it, you guys, and that Freedoms Network as well. Dang, I'm tweeted from the Spreaker and from Freedoms Network and from RLM and RLM Radio and wowzer, wowzer. Holy crap. And yes, I'm getting really, I feel bad for the people that were wounded because I really honestly and truly whether this is a false flag or not which I believe yes it is a double F double F bomb if you will I believe this is a false flag thing but that does not mean that people were not hurt or killed because you know them psychopaths that do this crap they um really do enjoy having that blood sacrifice saying going on you know they are sick bastards ain't no two shits about it So, yeah, although I feel really bad for all of those who have been tragically affected by this, I would really love to find out who in the hell did this shit. I mean, to actually know who did this shit and dropkick their sorry asses through the goalposts of life because they most definitely need to be dropkicked. Oh... Oh, thank you, Joe. Joe was sending me some wonderful healing prayers. Because, yeah. (laughs) Cranky poo. I've been just a bit of a cranky poo today. Yes, I have. Okay. Let me, um. I saw you, Jabberwocky, over here on, on Twitter. How you doing, sweetheart? Hope your day is going very well. Um, oh, oh, Christ. And then I scroll down and I see shitlery. I got to close Twitter because that's just all there is to it. You see three shitlery images in a row. And that's that is my cue to shut that shit down. That's right, Rob Works. Fuck it. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Fuck it. Assholes. And you know what? I know there's an awful lot of people out there that say that if you wish to battle evil, 
you know, you need to go the other direction. But sometimes you flat ass need to confront it and let people know, hey, 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 there is evil out there. And this is what it looks like. And this is what we need to work against or away from. But you do need to point it out so that people understand that, yeah, that is evil. Those people are vile, disgusting pieces of shit. And they need to be flushed. And I don't care how big a plunger it takes. You know, get them damn floaters to go down that drain. Okay. <sighs> Over here in the RLM, which is where you need to be if you want to give me static. And yeah, buddy, please dish it. Dish it. I'm ready. I see IB Don C beat everybody to the duck. Good job, Don. He beat me to the duck over in the corner pocket as well. Also beat Sock Puppet. Ha ha. Ha ha. I know Sock. I'm such a crud. But I do like to see someone befriend the duckies because them little quack quack waddle waddle quack quack waddle. They're so cute. They're little wet nipper sinkers. And it is so wet out here. That we got lots of nipper sinkers. And I'm really, really surprised my cat is not um, making all kind of fun things happen across the screen. Because she's sitting with her butt right close to the keyboard. So, okay. Over here in the RLM, right up top, I see Barman. Who is the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Because I said so. And that should just be enough reason for you. Because, well, you know, for my kids, when they'd say why, I'd say because I said so. That's why. So there you go. Uh-oh. Did I get uh, Java Doctor 2 radicalized today? Oh, my God, Java. Booyah. <laughs> I also see Grimner is over here in the RLM, and he is the RLM god, don't you know? I also see the lovely Kate is here, who is no longer in the great state of Texas. She has moved over to one of my most favorite estates in the whole wide world, although I've never been there. I have been to Texas but I haven't been to Florida yet. Asmo! Hey, Asmodeus, how you doing, sweetheart? I also see the lovely Beth Z is here, as well as BTC Bob, who is the first of the Bob twins. I only see Bob twins over here, so that's okay. Twins are okay. Double the pleasure, double the fun. Booyah, booyah. Hi, Chalcedony. How are you doing, hon? Haven't seen you chitty chat for a while. I also see a double dip and a Chloe going on. And you know what? My first story that I'm going to get to is from the lovely Chloe. Thank you, Chloe, for posting that in the RLM. I'll get to it here in just a minute. I also see Free Enslaved is here. Hey there, Free. How you doing? How's Fang? Just got to ask because I like pubbies. I'm here, kind of, sort of, little on the, well, I'm not quite so cranky as I used to be. Uh, I'm winking right back at you, Java. <laughs> I also see IB Don C is here, who's only got one puppy left. And man, if I did not already have f five fur babies, you can bet your sweet bippy I'd be coming to get me another puppy. But man, <laughs> oh, puppies eat a lot. And then they poop a lot, which creates landmines. And puppies, new puppies, yeah, they do grant, they do landmines in uh, the house. Come on down. Oh, hey, there you go. Okay, Kate, I can do that. I have a vehicle that carries five. <laughs> I'm sure I could swing by and grab Moosey and. I don't know. May I, I'll have to see who all I can pick up on the way down. Come visit you. Okay. Let's see. Where was I at? Java, 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 Dr. Two. Um, and yes, Java, I'm hoping that P. Bunyan will be joining us this evening. Or at least that is what he implied in the messages that he sent me on Instagram. Which I don't get on Instagram all that often. My granddaughter got me on there. So I'm I'm a rather slow Insta grammy <laughs> i just flat ass don't check it all i have way too many sites that i go to Oy. and i i take a trip without leaving my seat which is not necessarily a good thing 
job, JJ's. Hey, JJ's 999. How are you doing over there in Scotland? You know, you guys don't ever have anything exciting happen over there unless you get a good breeze and blows those kilts up. And then all the women go, oh my, I see Juana Taco is in the house. And today is officially Taco Tuesday. Taco, taco, taco. Go. And I'm having leftover spaghetti bake. I made some last night and I, I had some bread that I picked up. Oh, puppies are welcome. I have two puppies <laughs> and they're both big puppies. Like, um, okay, last time I took Bubba to the vet, well, he was 78 pounds. He's a good size puppy. Um, he's a little bit bigger than Snuffles. In any case, and yeah, man, when that boy gets to running, <laughs> you just, it's best to just stay out of his way because he seems to think he's a bowling ball and he will knock your ass down. Oy, my slinky dog. Okay, where was I uh, besides corn fused? Oh, yeah, over here, Juana Taco. Yeah, and baked spaghetti. And some wonderful bread that I got at the Wimmy Diddle that's got rosemary baked into the middle of it. Oh, put a little bit of butter on that and toasted it last night. Oh, damn. Oh, I was feeling fat and sassy last night. And I'm going to be feeling that way when I get done on the radio tonight, too. You can bet your sweet ass on that one. I also see rain is here. And rain, honey, you know, even though I asked you to come visit, you know, as in the moisture kind from the sky, thanks. You can stop any time now. Because uh, Monday, well, let's see, Sunday it come in and rained, and we got probably close to an inch Sunday. And then... Um, Let's see, Monday night, while I was at the bowling alley, we had three tornado warnings. Two of them were just south of town. Well, one was southwest of town, and the other one was south of town, both of them moving towards town. Thankfully, they decided to veer to the east just a wee bit and just went through open farmland. No real destruction that I know of other than maybe taking out some crops, but... Preferably, if they would have gone through some wheat fields that have already been harvested, that would have been cool. But I haven't really heard any reports on that. But yeah, three Dernators out here Monday night. And my rain gauge, because I didn't get it dumped from Sunday. So I had just shy of four inches between the two. And yeah, some people had over five inches of rain just from Monday night. So yeah, rain, honey, you can stop. <gasps> Pea Bunyan just joined us. Booyah! Pea bunion. Okay, <clears throat> let me see. Where was I at? Uh, da 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 da. Wanna pea bunion rain? RLM fluke. Who is the Vanna White of the RLM? Hey, fluky, how you doing, hon? I also see Rob Works, who has fired up the bubbler. Thank you, Rob. Needed that bubbler. Get me in a way better mode. I also see Tip Bob is here. Hey, Tip Bob. That's the last of the Bob twins for this evening, at least. Trust No One is here, as well as Vinny. Vinny, how you doing, hon? I also see Phantom. Thank you once again, Phantom, for um, the wonderful intro that you did for me, darling. Although, this evening, I'm thinking the Avenged was just a little bit more appropriate for my uh, mood today. And my daughter just posted a little thing the other day that Avenged and Breaking Breaking Benjamin, yeah, is going to be touring and uh, she's wanting to go see them. It's like, wait a minute, excuse me, you know your mom kind of likes them too, honey. Christmas is coming. <laughs> oh well. Beetle! How you doing, Beetle? Hope everything is going absolutely splendiferous for you and your part of the world. I also see Colfax 101 is here, as well as Dima, another one of those duck-friendly people. Uh, Freeze-dried, which I do believe that could be an alter ego of Flash Rooney Dork, but don't quote me on that. I also see Frumpy is here. Hey, Frumpy, how you doing, hon? I was hoping to be frumpy this evening, but I didn't have a chance to get changed into my frumpy clothes. Although, I wore flannel today. Does that count for anything? 
It's kind of chilly out here, like in the low 50s and drizzly. Eee. Um, Jehovah One is here. Jehovah is having a lot of fun with our weather right now. Kozu is in the house. Hey, Kozu, how you doing, hon? I also see... What? You suspect that Graham saw Pick standing in the snow? Oh, honey. I don't... Uh, now I'm going to have to go back to Instagram and peek. Because <laughs> I just haven't... Um, I'm just really not... Yeah. Oh, well. Uh... That would have got you fired uh, it would, or would it have gotten people fired up? Never know. Well, you was, you was fighting fire, hon. <laughs> I know you can't listen, but I'm still going to give you shit. Okay, um, where was I? Mary B., the lovely lady from Down Under. How are you doing, B? I hope your weather is warming up down in your neck of the woods. It's chilling off down here or up here. Hmm... I needed a drink of coffee. I also see Moy, 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 Moy is here. That's another fun one to say. Moy, 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 Moy. Warning, warning. Danger, to Will Robinson. Danger. I also see Poxified is here as well as Pon Popon Sauce. Hey there, you guys. You ain't talking much, but hey there anyway. And RLM Discord 1. Why do you have Discord, my dear? Or do you just need to tune a fish? Or tuna yourself. Sock Puppet is here. Hey, Sock. How you doing, hon? I also see Slim Jim Flim is here. Hey, Slim Jim. Slim Jims. That makes me think of beef jerky, and now I'm hungry again. Damn it. Kim trailed and bushy-tailed. Oh, my goodness. That sounds almost naughty. <laughs> And to round out the crew over here in the RLM chat, I see Teddy. Hey, Teddy, welcome aboard. How are you doing, sweetheart? Hope you're having an absolutely amazing day. And everybody's welcoming P. Bunyan back into the fold because he's been gone for a while. And damn it all, what the hell? Who said you could run off like that? I know, I did not give you permission to do such things. Let's see. Okay, that's just real cute. Fe fed book deleted a video I just shared on what's actually happened in Vegas. Imagine that, Tim. Yeah, they delete an awful lot of stuff. My fed book, fascist book, however you wish to look at it, call it, <coughs> excuse me, has been an obnoxious twit of late. Uh, what is that, Mary B? Oh, you're doing good? Oh, yay! You missed spring and got right into summer heats. Yoinks! Whacking out emails. Oh, holy crap! Okay. Yes, I did notice all of the lovely scenery that P. Bunyan was in. Thank you ever so much for what you do, by the way, P. Bunyan. That takes a special breed of individual to do that kind of stuff. So, okay, am I missing anything anywhere? Don't think so. So, I am going to move along. I know, Rascal, you're going to help. You're such a good little kitty. Just a minute, I got... Oh, okay, my sister. Let me see. Back from seeing the surgeon, everything looks good. Yay! Oh, uh. <sighs> Okay, so on to this story that the lovely Chloe shared over in the RLM. It's from CBSNews.com. Feds, sorry, but love isn't an ingredient. Oh, yes, it is, sweetie, but you just can't measure it. So, from Concord, Mass., Love may be a many splendored thing, but as far as the federal officials are concerned, it is not an ingredient found in food. That's because y'all ain't got none. Okay? That's, you cannot measure something that you do, cannot recognize or do not see or have. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has told the Neshoba Brook Bakery in Concord, Mass. that love shouldn't be listed on packaging for its granola. Why not, asked Holios. It's not like it's going to cause cancer or anything like that. Just because you can't test it. 
butt munchers. In a letter posted this week, the agency says federal regulations require that ingredients must be listed by their common or usual name and that love is not a common or usual name of an ingredient. Only in your books, honey. Because when I cook for someone else, it's included in everything that I make. Just saying. The bakery CEO, John Gates, told the Associated Press on Wednesday that the bakery will be fully cooperative with the FDA. I'm thinking they need a single finger salute. Show them the love. But he also said that the company has gotten a positive reaction from people since news of the letter began to circulate. It taps this feeling that a lot of Americans have that there are ways in which the government can overreach. And it seems kind of silly, Gates said, because it's about the word love. It's cathartic. It makes it something that people can smile at. And there's not a damn thing wrong with it being on there, assholios in the Food and Drug Administration. Y'all just, the only reason that you are even part of the food thing is so that you can say, oh, you, you, if you take those natural things as food supplements, well, we can regulate that shit too, assholes. I think y'all need to go away. Stop regulating stuff. Let people regulate themselves. Oh, wait, we don't have to ask permission. We just need to regulate ourselves. That's what it is peeps stop listening to someone else telling you that they can regulate you i think if you've got a functioning brain cell you can decide what is appropriate for you and what is not and you can let them know that excuse me if this is not your body it's not your business and as i say that (laughs) i think about when i say that abortion should not be allowed and you know what? It's not my body. It's not my business. That's what I would get told. And you know what? <clears throat> I hate it when shit comes back to bite me on the ass. <sighs> Sadly, these people do not understand that there are ways that you can prevent pregnancy so you don't have to go through all that shit and it would make it all a moot point. But no, we can't actually act responsibly, can we? Let's get back to this article so I don't start dropping F-bombs again right away at least. So, apparently while the FDA may be technically correct, some on social media don't seem to be buying it. Physicists have proven the act of observation creates physical changes. Challenge FDA to prove love is not an ingredient, one person said on Twitter. Booyah, there you go. Make them prove it ain't there. Make them prove that it is something bad for you. Chocolate lovers might quibble too because chocolate is known to contain tryptophan, an amino acid used to produce the neurotransmitter serotonin, which is associated with feelings of happiness. What is that, pea bunion? Um, yep, I got to see the... Got to see a vid of one of the bears you saw. Yes, I did, sweetheart. Um, let's see. Hundreds of stitches if you... What? 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 Okay, I got to see what y'all are talking about. Love bites only for... Gra- <laughs> Thanks, Frumpy. <laughs> I tell you what, after this morning, my backside definitely got tenderized because there was an awful lot of chewing going on. And it's like, really? Excuse me. But uh, I am not deserving of this butt chewing. You need to stop and realize. Uh, (laughs) Move along, Grammy. Move along. Do not dwell. Do not hold it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, back to this article before I get too cantankerous. Oh, wait, guess what? I'm done with this article. Um, Oh, and Front Point Legal says, we aren't giving up on love. We know it's the most important ingredient for Neshoba Concord Bakery. Booyah! 
There you go. Don't give it up and tell the FDA to kiss your grits and fix them some grits with some love. <laughs> That'll learn them. Ass munches. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share this real quick. Oh, fascist book, fascist book. What is your problem? Okay. Just a sec. I'd like to see. There we go. We'll just share that. That'll learn them. Okay. I'll put that over here on the effing site as well. TD, I see you, TD. How are you doing, sweetheart? I hope you're having an absolutely amazing day. It is a wackadoodle Wednesday, so how about you have an absolutely wackadoodly day? That would be wonderful, too. Okay, put this over here. Dun, dun, dun. Copy, paste, copy, paste. Do a couple of little emoticons. Gary L. was sharing some absolutely wonderful stuff, insights on that whole Vegas thing. And, you know, I really, I, I can't decide if I want to just not go there and not feed that beast or if I want to go there and call them out on their assholiness. You know? You ever been in one of those it is a quandary kind of things? That's kind of sort of where I am right now. It is a quandary. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Joe. And thank you, Juan. Hi, Juan. Over here on Fakey Book, did you know your soul already knows its truth path? All you must do is trust. See? Grasshopper? Okay. Oop. Let me grab this link and put it over here in the uh, corner pocket as well. Because it's mighty quiet in the corner pocket. The hell is nobody playing along? What the hell? Okay. Um, hunting bears. You know, you got to watch out for that hunting bears because I, I heard tell that um, it, not only do you have a right to arm bears, but you have a right to bear arms. Or is that the other way around? Oh, never know. Okay, I am going to go to my pocket because I threw an awful lot of stuff in my pocket. And an awful lot of that stuff was of that. But you know what? I am going to go here. This is from the Health Ranger. Naturalnews.com And I believe it was a lovely, <coughs> excuse me, Lisa B. that shared this earlier today. Thank you, Lisa B. She has been sharing an awful lot of, what is that? What's that, Frumpy? Fuck it, Graham. They don't even care if, if we see right through them. Yeah. That's true, Frumpy. And, you know, I did. I do remember seeing something about a month back that they really cannot lie. You know, so they put it out there, but they put it out there in such an outrageous way that, you know, so many people just go, oh, it just can't possibly be. So, you know, they're not lying just when they put shit out there. It's just that sometimes they put it out there um, either via Hollywood or, um, you know, they put it out. Cripes, men in black. I mean, right there. They said the real news is in the Inquirer and all of those other funky ass magazines that are right there by the impulse items as you check out of the grocery store. You know, you want to see the truth. Check those bad boys out. Because, yeah, all that shit. But they say, oh, those people are just nuts. That's all just made up shit. Yeah, uh-huh. Every bit that's out there has a kernel of truth in it. At least one kernel. I want to know where the hell the majors and the generals are. 
if all I got is a kernel. Oh, well, from naturalnews.com. There is a miracle molecule in licorice root that nullifies liver damage from alcohol and Tylenol. Did you know that Tylenol causes as much, if not more, damage to your liver than alcohol does? It's bad juju stuff. You know, and it's no wonder. I can't, I can't take Tylenol. I mean, I can, but you got to peel me off the ceiling. That stuff just makes me loopy. Err. <laughs> I always got to throw that err in when it comes to that shit. Oh, this is stunning scientific research, and it has been systematically suppressed by Big Pharma and the FDA. Now, this was originally posted February the 5th of 2016. But uh, you know what? Sometimes this stuff just needs to be peat and repeated around the world. So... In what is undoubtedly one of the most astonishing herbal cure stories of the decade, a natural molecule from licorice root extract, which is glycerazine, glycerazine. that's how I'm going to pronounce it because it's got entirely too many consonants in a row. Um, it has been repeatedly and scientifically shown to block nearly all liver damage from both alcohol consumption and the over-the-counter Tylenol pills or acetaminophen if you are buying the generic version of it. So here, Mike Adams has collected PDFs of seven specific studies that... Um, and scientific ones as well, that show astonishing uh, hepato, hepato, or hepato, <laughs> why do you have such big ass words? Why don't I read this shit before I go live? Because that's half the fun, is not reading it before I go live and then stutter stumbling through this shit. Okay, there's a $25 word there. And it's some kind of effects, which basically it means it protects the liver. Why didn't you say that in the first place instead of that big old $25 word? Because I, quite frankly, don't have 25 bucks to spare right now. Not for that kind of shit. So, this is, uh, it protects the liver from the cellular damage caused by alcohol and Tylenol. It also happens to exhibit strong antiviral, anti-tumor, and anti-inflammation effects at the same time. Now, this may be the closest thing to a miracle cure for liver disease, cirrhosis, and liver cancer that's ever been discovered. Yet nobody in the pharmaceutical industry has ever mentioned it. And why? I know, Grim, easy for me to say. <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. The media won't cover it either. And the FDA has criminalized any real discussion of this by licorice root manufacturers or supplement companies. Why? Because there have not been properly accepted scientific studies, which, you know, if they don't accept it, then it must not be true. Just like everything on the internet is true, if they don't accept it, then it can't be true. Just like love cannot be a real ingredient because they don't accept it or recognize it. Just ask them, they'll tell ya. The U.S. government has gone out of its way to block the public from learning about this information even banning a licorice root extract company called NTX Technology from being able to put accurate label claims on alcohol products infused with their herb-derived compound called NTX. The innovative molecule is scientific, preventative, and recreational all at the same time while protecting the liver. NTX Technology founder, here we go, Chig, Chiguru Pati, Chiguru Pati, thank you for that wonderful name, uh, I'll just call you Chigu, <laughs> Chiguru, Chiguru Pati, wow, damn, can you imagine learning to spell that when you're a kid, in any case, they told the Tasting Panel magazine last year that, um, 
Human study trial results showed that NTX massively reduced harmful effects on the liver by up to 93%. Um, glycerazin from licorice root is a powerful, potent liver protector. So apparently he has complied um, some of the highlights of the astonished, or excuse me, not complied, blah. See, now I try and say these tongue twister, blah, 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 entirely too many consonants words, and then I can't read for shit. So he's compiled some of the highlights of the astonishing research of glycerazin, glycerazin and its related glyceratinic. <laughs> GA. I like that. It's called GA, glyceratinic acid. It's on the uh, protecting the liver from alcohol damage and Tylenol damage, and there are links included in this. Note that the science studies below, which the links, GL and GA both refer to compounds of glycerazin from licorice root. The effects of pretreatment of glycerazin and glycerazin tinic acid on the retrozyne <laughs> retrozyne induced hepatotoxicity in rats wow i made it all the way through i'm so proud of myself the results demonstrated that the 3d 3 day pre and see i can't even say a 3 3 letter word now <laughs> Okay, the results demonstrated that the three-day pretreatment with either GL or GA exhibited protective effect on uh, retrozyne-induced liver damage in rats. <sighs> I'm worn out. <laughs> Recent advances in natural products from plants for treatment of liver diseases. Um, so glycerazin, here we go again, which is a major biological active constituent of licorice or of licorice root, has various pharmacological effects and been used as a treatment for chronic hepatitis. It's a natural anti-inflammatory and antiviral uh, triterpene, tri tri triterpene, hell, y'all are going to have to read this shit, <laughs> and I want to see how many of you don't stutter, stumble over these words, and it's ancillary drugs used clinically in China for protection of liver function and treatment of tumors. It had a protective effect on the immunosuppression, a strong nonspecific anti-inflammatory effect, and an effect of reducing the incidence of sodium and water retention. And these results suggest that uh, glycerazin alleviates CCI4-induced liver injury. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you think so, Frumpy? That's just really sad. That almost sounds like uh, a personal problem. <laughs> if your redesign fell off, that's that's not a good thing. Uh, it sounds painful. Um, what was that? Okay. Dun dun. Da, 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 da. Drink up. Oh, what's that? Drink up, easel. Thou bootless plume pluckered rudesby. <laughs> wow, that sounds like a hell of a concoction to drink. Just, by the way, I'm going to have a sip of coffee now that I'm thinking about it. Mmm. Oh, I feel ever so much better now. Okay, so back to this. And all of these great big newfangled scientific words that I'm stumbling through. <laughs> okay, it goes on to say this protection is likely due to the induction of hemioxygenase 1 and the 
down regulation of pro-inflammatory mediators and may represent a potent drug protection or protecting the liver injury. Wow. So you protect a bruise on the liver or is that a scrape or a cut or a just flat ass smackaroonie? There's also a chart below that um, shows you a study on how drastically it reduces the expression of liver inflammation and damage to near zero. Sweet. Did you know, this is listening to Dr. John Bergman. I love Dr. John. He's got the goofiest laugh. I mean, it, it's like a um, a Burt Reynolds kind of laugh and he's a big boy, but you know, chiropractor and all that fun stuff and homeopath, but um Cancer is a genetic expression. You don't have a cancer gene. It's a genetic expression. And you don't have cancer. You have you have cells that are expressing or having a genetic expression of cancer. And you can deal with it. So don't ever go around. You know, if someone tells you you have been diagnosed with cancer, don't say that you have cancer because then you will. Because people are so compliant like that. You know, when the doctor says, well, you've only got three months to live, people have a tendency to comply and just die within that three months. Stop doing that. Stop listening to them. It is a genetic expression. That does not mean that you have to die from it. You know, there are ways to deal with it. And, well, you know, as Captain Obvious would say, we're all going to die. Because uh, that happens to us all. I I even read it on the internet that, yeah, even if you drink coffee, you're still going to die. Damn it. Or at least the meat suit expires. In any case, back to this lovely article with all these great big $25 words. I'm going to go broke reading this article. The protective potential against cell death was achieved mainly by preventing intracellular GSH depletion decrease in ROS formation, as well as inhibition of mitochondrial membrane depolarization. <laughs> Whatever that means. And it was found to modulate crit critical endpoints of oxidative stress-induced up, 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 yeah. <laughs> apoptosis, I think. And could be beneficial against liver diseases where oxidative stress is known to play a crucial role. Why don't you just say that it, it's beneficial against liver diseases and just call it good? Because people like me, we don't understand all this shit. Hmm. Um, liver cirrhosis. In common clinical endpoint of chronic liver disease is characterized by tissue fibrosis and the replacement of normal liver architecture by structurally abnormal molecules and the development of portal hypertension and other life-threatening complications, inhibition of fibrogenesis at an early stage is nowadays considered a feasible strategy to treat liver cirrhosis. Did anybody understand that whole paragraph there? I know I didn't. I read it and I barely stumbled a couple of times. It gets even more technical. Trust me. So I'm just going to go ahead and share this. And, and Mike Adams looks like he has a video here to where he can explain it all to you and probably pronounce those words a hell of a lot better than I can. Because he's used to using those big words and probably actually knows what half of them mean. <laughs> okay. What is that? Okay. What did you have to buy, P. Bunyan? Oh. Your boots got melted. That sucks, hon. I would think I need to invite you to one of my family's bonfires and because that tends to happen at my family's bonfires. Someone always loses a shoe. We're just kind of crazy like that. Okay. In your case, it was at... The, oh, the ground was so hot. Holy shit. That sucks. Okay. I'm going to share this over on the effing side as well. And let y'all just muddle through it. 
Suffice it to say, that whole thing goes on and on and on with all kinds of technical jargon and lingo and all that other fun stuff, and it basically says that licorice is good for you, or at least licorice root, which I'm thinking that is probably a niece and, um, or a nephew. No. <laughs> I like black li licorice, by the way. So, um, and although that is chocolate... I'm going to use that little emoticon over here. I'm also going to share this over on Fakie Book just because I can. Thank you, Health Ranger. Next time, please use English so I don't have so much trouble reading it. Okay. So, I'm going to go back to my pocket and find something else that maybe is not nearly as difficult to uh, read. How's that sound? Uh, okay, now my Breda Choey called me out on this one. Said it was just a wee bit disingenuous. But, just because it's disingenuous does not mean it's not truthful or factual. However you wish to look at it. It's people tying. It's from 12160.info. So, the largest mass shooting in American history is in fact the Wounded Knee Massacre. Where hundreds of Lakota were slaughtered by the government. But you see, when the government does it, it's not considered a mass shooting kind of thing. Because, well, the government did it. Now, the Wounded Knee Massacre, also called the Battle of Wounded Knee, occurred on December 29, 1890, near Wounded Knee Creek in the Lakota Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in the United State of, or in the U.S. state of, South Dakota. The previous day, a detachment of the U.S. 7th Cavalry Regiment, commanded by Major Samuel M. Whitside, intercepted Spotted Elk's band of Minikonju Lakota Minikonju I hope I didn't bugger that up too bad and 38 Hunkpapa Lakota near Porcupine Butte and escorted them 5 miles or 8 kilometers westward to Wounded Knee Creek where they made camp the remainder of the 7th Cavalry Regiment led by Colonel James W. Forsyth, arrived and surrounded the encampment. The regiment was supported by a battery of four Hotchkiss mounted guns. On the morning of December 29th, the U.S. Cavalry troops went into the camp to disarm the Lakota. Yeah, see, that's how it goes. First, they disarm you... One version of events claims that during the process of disarming the Lakota, a deaf tribesman named Black Coyote was reluctant to give up his rifle, claiming he had paid a lot for it. A scuffle over the rifle ensued, causing several Lakota to draw their weapons and open fire on the cavalry regiment. The situation quickly devolved as both sides began firing indiscriminately. What is that, Frumpy? Um, yeah, honey, I've, yeah, I did read that one. Thank you, Frumpy, I have read that one. Um, that was one of my me mental meanderings yesterday. I meandered all over the damn place yesterday. Uh, let's see. Okay, so... Rifle ensued, causing Lakota to draw their weapons, open fire on the cavalry regiment. The situation quickly devolved as both sides began firing indiscriminately. Mm, yeah. By the time the battle was over, more than 150 men, women, and children of the Lakota had been killed, and 51 were wounded, four men and 47 women and children, some of whom died later. Some estimates place the number of dead at 300. 
Now, 25 Army soldiers also died at the battle site, and 39 were wounded. Six of the wounded later died of their injuries. At least 20 soldiers were awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. Here you go. You've done such a good job of mowing down these people that you were trying to disarm. So we'll give you a shiny badge. In 2001, the National Congress of American Indians passed two resolutions condemning the military awards and called on the U.S. government to rescind them. It does no good to rescind them now, darling. It's over. It's done. It is a sad fact. The site of the battlefield slash massacre has been designated a National Historical Landmark by the U.S. Department of Interior, and in 1990, both houses of the U.S. Congress passed a resolution on the historical centennial formally expressing deep regret for the massacre. We're really, really sorry that we killed so many of your people. But if that one guy would have just given up, then maybe, just maybe, this wouldn't have happened. So it's all your fault because you didn't give up your guns like you're supposed to. Oh, shit. My Uncle Tommy is calling. Um... Just a sec. Will you answer that? No, can you answer it? Um, so, Corgi Puppies. Corgi Puppies. I'm going to share this over here on, um, let's see. I'll put it in the effing site as well. <laughs> I got things going on here in the background, so I'm feeling just a wee bit distracted. Because my phone is going off, my uncle is trying to call, and it's like, oh, ooh, what's going on? So, let's see, and which one? There's one more I want to put on here. Yeah, that one. Okay. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. So, where else? Mm, go and look at my pocket again. Yeah, I'm a little bit frazzled. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Where? This one. Yeah, I saw this one last week. And uh, I do believe I shared it in the chat just because. What? Um. Oh, uh, what's that, Frumpy? Lots of folks bitching about that. Oh. Oh, sweet. Don's channel is now on here. Yay! Okay. I know. I wish my cat knew how to answer the phone. <laughs> it would be nice. But the no tails kind? Okay. Yeah. So, back to... <clears throat> this is from Breitbart.com. And when was this dated? Ah, September the 8th of 2016. So, it's been a while back. But Brown University apparently provided tampons in the men's bathroom because both sexes menstruate, which that's pretty damn obvious of late, you know, or at least they're on their period, whiny asses. But, um, yeah. Okay, so tampons are now genderless or now a genderless necessity, according to Brown University who have announced that they will be providing tampons for both men's and women's bathrooms across university this ac academic year. Which was last year, by the way. 
The tampons will be delivered to bathrooms by the university's student president, Viet Nguyen. I hope I, st- I don't even give a shit if I said that right. As well as 20 volunteers. With Nien claiming that the initiative is a means of educating students that men menstruate as well as women. Really, they do. And so I'm, I'm just curious. Um, I would really like to know. No, I don't want to know. I don't, I, now that I think about it, I don't want to know where they insert the tampon. It sounds painful no matter how you look at it. Um, <clears throat> apparently, in an email to the student body, Viet said, there's been a lot of conversation about why pads and tampons are a necessity, not a luxury, but not a lot of action. We wanted to take it into our own hands. Oh, he, so I do know now, he also claimed that the initiative would help low-income students who struggle with having the necessary funding for food, let alone tampons, and that it would set a tone of trans-inclusivity, that trans people are an important part of the population. And once again, I want... No, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Mm. <sighs> Viet did acknowledge that uh, the decision would not be to everyone's liking. You think? Adding that he'd be naive to say that there won't be pushback. Oh, I'm assuming that there are some people that really don't want to have something shoved in the orifice that orifices that I'm thinking of men would have to shove those tampons into. But that people would come to understand the decision after having it explained. Oh, so you're going to have a class instructing them how to insert the tampons. That I would love to see. I would like to see that class. The tampons will be funded exclusively by Brown University Undergraduate Finance Board, it's a fund designed to improve the undergraduate student experience. <laughs> Teaching men how to insert tampons is an improvement on the undergraduate graduate student experience. Wow, y'all have a completely different uh, definition of improving an experience than I do. You really do. Viet and the student volunteers are cons- consequently congratulated by Brown's Director of News and Editorial Development, Brian Clark, who praises their tremendous initiative. Um, <laughs> what is that, Grivy? If you're a man and you have blood pouring, pouring out of your... <laughs> crotchal region you may have a problem that a tampon is not going to fix that is true grim i would mm, mm, i'm thinking that if if you had um i would say you probably know someone who thinks lorena bobbitt is like their hero you know that oh Ow. See you later, P. Bunyan. Have fun with your family. I know you've been away from them for quite a while. Whew. Uh, yeah, that doesn't sound pleasant at all, does it, Grim? Um, apparently, they expect USC will continue to solicit feedback on this new initiative and collect data on the use of these products, adding that the university administration will be interested to learn what they find as they assess the effectiveness of of the program moving forward. Um, wow. I would like to do a follow up on that. I would really like to know. Uh, wow. I want to know the kind of guys that would actually, you know, volunteer to. No, I wouldn't. Never mind. I take that back. Hmm. Wow. There are some strange people in this world. Like, really 
strange people in this world. We no, not gonna go there. Okay. <laughs> wow. I think sock needs this over here too. Oh, JJ's has quit over here in the corner pocket. There you go, Sock. I know you need that over there because, you know, men menstruate too. I mean, it's got the word men in there. So, yeah. <laughs> Vinny, I see you, honey. Um... What's that? U.S. Special Operations Forces ambushed in Africa? Uh-oh. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to go back to my pocket. Um... Okay, how to convert music. Damn, I got a shitload of stuff from... Nah. I just don't want to go there. I don't want to feed that beast. You know? I mean, and really, I'm there's umpteen gazillion things going on already on all of that shit. I'm just not going to add to that fire. Um, oh, Christ. And Colin Kaepernick versus Tim Tebow. A tale of two Christians on their knees. Yay. No. Another one. What's this? Dear Church. Oh. Well. See, I'm looking in my, my recommended in my pocket, and this is from PrestonSprinkle.com. Hmm, my Nashville statement. Should I be... I don't know. It is ironic and possibly prophetic that the Nashville Statement, or NS, was published the very same day that I released a short film on LGBT people in a church titled, Dear Church, I'm Gay. Um, I think these two statements represent two brands of evangelical approaches to questions about faith, sexuality, and gender. Oh boy, wow, am I ever glad I clicked on this one. These two brands overlap quite a bit. They both agree that marriage is between a man and woman and that all sexual relations outside this type of marriage covenant are a sin. Oh, really? That's a big overlap. However, there are many differences in tone, rhetoric, and how to go about this whole conversation. In some ways, the Nashville Statement brought these differences to light. So let me dive in with some pros and cons regarding this statement after I make two quick caveats. First, I was not aware of the NS until about three days after it was published. I wasn't asked to participate in its formation, nor did anyone on the list let me know that such a thing was happening. While I find some things positive with the statement, I will not, or I have not and will not sign the NS, and I'll explain why below. So, what is this? Uh, the Nashville Statement, Sexual Ethics, Sexuality, Homosexuality, and Church. Hmm. Second, everything I say below are my personal reflections and do not represent the Center for Faith, Sexuality, and Gender as a whole. At the center... We want to foster a healthy diversity within a historically Christian perspective on marriage and sexuality. I've told my board members and other collaborators that they are completely free to form their own thoughts on the NS. In fact, several people who have signed the NS have also endorsed me or the center's work. And I'm eternally grateful for their gracious remarks in the near future. In the near future, the center will probably release a more formal statement. Yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Um, 
Yes, it did, Frumpy. My imagination just kind of went to a not-so-pretty place. Okay, so the pros of whatever this is. I admire the author's passion to uphold a historically Christian view of marriage and gender. And again, I'm in agreement with the general conclusion about marriage expressed in the document. I would consider myself just as passionate about an orthodox view of marriage and gender as they are. And I do think that Christians who affirm same-sex marriage and deny the biological link between sex and gender are at odds with some very basic tenets of the Christian worldview. I just don't think this is a statement or this statement is the best way to go about the whole decision or discussion. I also value the wonderful contributions to the kingdom that many of the signers have made. Several people who signed the document have shaped my heart and thinking in ways that words cannot express. These names, friends, mentors, even heroes, have fueled my passion for the gospel more than they realize. Even if I've arrived at some theological conclusions on other issues that they may not find as compelling as I do. So, what problems do I have with this statement? Okay, apparently there are many, and I'm wondering what the hell is this statement? I did not read it. And how in the hell did I go from tampons for men to this? <laughs> Only on the rocket chair do you get this kind of shit. Trust me. Trust me. So, <clears throat> when I first read this statement, and I've read it several times now, several flags flew up in my mind. I have not read the statement, so I'm gonna, just going to move on here. So, one frustration I have with this is the evangelical approach to the LGBT conversation has been profoundly impersonal and one-sided. Lots of truth and very little grace. And this statement was, as statements usually are, impersonal and one-sided. We affirm, we deny. Who talks like this anymore? Well, I don't. What does this do for a 14-year-old kid in a youth group who's, who's contemplating suicide because for some unchosen reason... He doesn't feel at home in his own body and daily wishes that he had a female one. Oh, sweetheart, really, you need to stop and you really need to consider that one. Because once you whack certain parts of the anatomy off, they are gone. You don't want to have that buyer's remorse thing on that one. So, he puts on a mask at school for fear of getting beat up, mocked, or tormented on social media. He's terrified to tell anyone, especially his youth pastor who just signed off on the NS. I seriously doubt that too many youth pastors will sign this, so. And where is he in this statement? Where is the pastor's wife who attracted, who's attracted to women but would never tell her husband or anyone else? What does this statement do to create a church culture where she could tell her church and be gladly received into a community of beggars who have found bread at the foot of the cross. I'm, wow, I'm just really, how did I get here? <laughs> I long for the day when gay people can come out of their small group and everyone would yawn. You're a sinner too. Really? Okay. As far as I'm concerned, what happens between consenting adults is their business, not mine. It's when there is no consent between the adults. Adults. Here. I'm done with this one because I'm just really confused. Really confused. Hey. <laughs> And I'll just let you guys play with that one because, wow, between the male tampons and now this. Thank you, Preston Sprinkle, for, <laughs> for, 
for adding to my fibuttlement. Oi. Um, yeah. Y'all are just going to have to muddle through that one on your own. Because I just couldn't do any more. <laughs> I'm lost. Uh, it is a wackadoodle Wednesday. That's just all there is to it. Okay. Wow. That's some weirdness going on over here on this effing site. So, I'm going to go back here. Mm, thanks for what's recommended over here in my pocket. Y'all are just really weird. Um, oh, here we go. Let's go to this one. This one, this one looks safe. <laughs> yeah, safe. Yeah. This is from uh, QZ.com. The rise of renewable energy is ushering in a sustainable future. Oh, hey, this might be a fun one. Uh, it was produced on behalf of J.P. Morgan Chase and Co., uh really and so where is okay that was an ad so runners in london are different than runners in new york city what okay that's a shoe ad so where is my article fuck me running it's not giving me the article <laughs> <laughs> oh, this just sucks. <laughs> I am having a... I'm going to let you guys see what I see. Because it's like, damn it. This just... <laughs> this just is not cool. Um, wow. Yes, I have flipped my wig, Vinny, and I don't even have a wig. <laughs> What is this, free enslaved? I want to see this. Uh, new nanomaterial can extract hydrogen fuel from seawater. Oh, sweet. Thank you. That looks a lot more productive than the one that I clicked on that doesn't give me doodly shit. <laughs> I'm just going to... I mean, it goes right into a tennis shoe ad and all kind of other weirdness. And it's like, what the hell? Why did I bother clicking? Pocket, you have let me down. Okay, and, and when I try and share it, it says leading companies are increasingly looking for ways to integrate sustainability into their core business so that it's part of, not separate from, what they do. And mm, I'm just confused. <laughs> it's a whacked Wednesday. That's just all there is to it. I'm just going to be this poor little fee-buttled froggy over here on the effing site. Hmm. You blame it on Sock Puppet? What did Sock do? Yeah, see, it's Sock Puppet's fault. <laughs> Hi, Goober. <laughs> I didn't know. Whoa, wait a minute. What did I forget? No, I saw that one, Sock. I went there. I discussed it a little bit. Um, I'm going to close a couple of these because it's like, wow, I just don't. Okay. Free, that looks really, really cool, but I, mm, let me, I, I took a chance on one more. <laughs> and it really grabbed my attention, and so I want to, but I see some names in there that I'm really going to fee-buttle and butcher. In any case, the real message of the 2017 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. This is from the NewYorker.com. Shortly after Labor Day, the temperature begins to rise in research laboratories around the world. It's a symptom of what one of my mentors used to call Nobel fever. 
This morning, the fever broke with the news that Jeffrey Hall and Michael Ross, Rossbash of Bandis University and Michael Young of Rockefeller University will share the Nobel Prize of Physiology or Medicine for their work in the circadian rhythm, commonly known as the biological clock. Ah, interesting. Speaking with Car uh, or speaking from Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Thomas Perlman, the secretary of the prize committee, praised the scientists for helping to explain how plants, animals, and humans adapt their biological rhythms blah, 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 so that it is synchronized with the Earth's revolutions. And then we have to go and fuck it up with daylight savings time, which is coming up shortly. Yay. Or is that, yeah. Is that daylight savings time that's going on now, or do we go back to standard time? Fall back, <laughs> spring forward. That's all I remember. So, like last year's solo laureate, Yoshinoro Osumi, who is a Japanese biologist who studies auto, auto, autophagy, <laughs> whatever that is, which is the process by which cells dispose of their garbage. Oh, okay. They, he studies cells taking out the trash. Cool. Flash. There you go. That's how you can get um, a grant, a federal grant. Tell them you want to study how, how cells take out the trash. Apparently, this winning trio came with something of a surprise. The three Americans named did not appear on any of the major Nobel prediction lists. Booyah! Um, when Rosbach was awakened by the phone call from Sweden earlier this morning, he reportedly said, You've got to be kidding! Prior to Perlman's announcement, the smart money had been either on immunotherapy, which uses the body's defenses to fight cancer, or CRISPR, the revolutionary gene editing technique, and both remain strong candidates for future Nobel. Which, you know, Nobel Prizes really kind of lost a lot of their luster when they gave the Peace Prize to Dangleberry before he'd even... Yeah, that fell to pieces. So compared with advances like these, the circadian rhythm is decidedly less in vogue right now. So fundamentally, perhaps, that many handicappers forgot about it. Ah. Okay. Apparently, the deliberations were cloaked in secrecy. Ooh. And I'm bored with this one, too. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> No, I don't want the latest from the New Yorker. I really don't. Because if it's anything like this, y'all and your technical mumbo-jumbo jargon. Oh, and Vinny is left. See how Vinny is. I don't keep forgetting it, Sock. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and share these. And you know what? Uh, since I'm batting a thousand, and that's not necessarily a good thing, sometimes saying you're batting a thousand is just a really fancy schmancy way of saying I'm sucking really bad right now. <laughs> so um, let me find a smart guy one. There we go. I got a little smart guy emoticon thing. And I'm just going to go and I'm going to find the pig. Because, yeah, I can't go wrong with the pig. Although I do have a tendency to growl at Hambo and Porcus from time to time. But, <gasps> word of the day is actually a word. It's family. People like Uncle Hot Hands and Aunt Horse Laugh, whom you might otherwise avoid like the plague, but tolerate anyway because blood is thicker than water. Just barely, hun. In the quotable quotes section... There is no worse tyranny than to force a man to pay for what he does not want 
merely because you think it would be good for him. Robert A. Heinlein. Ah, yeah, thanks, Heinlein, for that one. Is he the same guy that wrote uh, Dianetics? I, I tried to read that book, and I just flat-ass could not get into it. It's like, what? Um, let's see. I think I'm going to go way down. Scroll way down, because, man, it goes on forever and ever to this date in history. So, the 4th of October, 1636, the Plymouth Colony in Massachusetts sails in uncharted waters by drafting first law. Curiously, it bans a bloated, drunken lib from wearing a Speedo. Go figure. Wow. The first law on the new land, or new to them land. That's kind of like when you buy a used car. It's new to you, but it doesn't mean it's new. In any case, this date in history, the 4th of October, 1854, Pigster Swino unimpressed. When honest Abe Lincoln dips his toe into those turbulent political waters with his first political speech at the Illinois State Fair. Wow. Not the same guy, Grimmy? What? Philosopher's Stone. What is that? Do I want to know? Ah. Thanks. I don't know that I want to know about that. Okay. So... It's not say oh thank you, Grimmy. Well that's pretty much all they had on the pig. Damn it. You know, I really am batting a thousand. So where should I go now? How about I go and check out um to a few places I haven't been to for a while. How's that sound? Uh, let me go check alternativenews.com, see if anybody's got anything besides, you know, what happens in Vegas is supposed to stay in Vegas. Um, yeah, and go figure, th this guy was supposedly on antidepressants. Huh. Shock, shock. Okay, alternate U news. I'm not really seeing anything there either. Oh, do you know that the FDA does not believe in the laws of chemistry? <gasps> hmm. Okay. How about... I'll just keep scrolling here. Uh, have your date and, you, and your garlic... To, what? Okay. Never mind, not going there. Um, mayonnaise disrupted? Nope, don't want to go there. How to improve President's Cup? Bring on the women? No, don't want to go there. Yet another major Russian story falls apart. Yeah, I heard Russia did it too. Let's go to the intercept. Let's see this one. I got to see what Russia did this time. Apparently, last, this is from, ah, September the 28th. M last Friday, or September the 28th, major, most major media outlets touted a major story about Russian attempts to hack into U.S. voting systems. Really? Based exclusively on claims made by the Department of Homeland Security. Yeah. You're trying to keep the Homeland Secure all right, you ass munches. I know about those machines you're... Somebody's got a stockpile of those lovely little machines that they were wanting to put in all the airports until people started bitching. Guess what? Coming to a casino near you. Russians attempted to hack election systems in 21 states in the run-up to last year's POTUS selections. Really? 
That began as a USA Today story. And then... Um, so, okay, someone says, Why aren't you talking about the 21 states that are finally informed Friday by DHS that they were hacked by Russia? Well, so you guys are looking into voter fraud. Is that what you're doing? And uh, you say Russia did it. Again. No. Ain't fallen for it. See, that I think the, the whole country is getting very jaded. You know, people are looking at this shit and they're going, No, seriously, I don't think so. Y'all are full of crap. All of this nonsense is just pretty much that nonsense. Mm. Okay. Let me go check this one out. Okay. Trey Gowdy did not believe that there was uh, one shooter. Which, yeah, I believe. I don't think there was just one. Um, there's an awful lot of crap about. They are going to just beat that drum to death, aren't they? Oh, here we go. Here's some more fear porn for you. How about this one? This is from yournewswire.com. I mean, if you're going to be afraid, let's be afraid on multiple fronts, shall we? Smallpox to return after ancient corpses unearthed. So, now you're going to have to have another inoculation, don't you know? Smallpox could make a nasty comeback after ancient corpses carrying the virus were accidentally unearthed in Siberia. Aha! Uh -huh. This is according to Russian scientists. Rapidly melting permafrost is causing the disease to reactivate from bodies buried over 120 years ago. Oh, so they're going to get you to get inoculations and feel bad about global warming all with the same article. Damn. Ranker.com reports that smallpox was thought to be eradicated in 1980. Um, no. It just morphed, or it went dormant for a while. And the last known case, apparently, of the disease was in Somalia. Since its first occurrence thousands of years ago, the virus has killed millions of people. It's a devastating disease that's wiped out entire populations. And this development could mean the return of smallpox and of massive deaths worldwide so be afraid be very afraid because there are plenty of negative effects of climate change but researchers haven't seen anything like this one before so see it's a double dose oh all righty Y'all can just finish reading that one, too, because <laughs> I'm just, I just got to, yeah, the fear porn is strong today, let me tell you. And I'm stepping it all over the place. <laughs> I'm not even really looking for it. I'm just kind of stepping in it. Mm. Okay. All them lovely little bugs. So, nope, I don't want to go there. Go back here. Thank. Um, voter registration records show Jared Kushner is a woman. Oh, ew. I'm just going to read the headlines now because, yeah. Hey, there's leaked documents that reveal that there's a Chinese plot to assassinate Kim Jong-un. Did you know that? Wow. Mm, actor killed by alien claims. Actor killed by alien claims he had contact with real aliens. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. 
this is the guy who played Ridley, uh, played Parker in the movie Alien. <gasps> ah. Hmm. Oh, and guess what? Three attorneys have been found dead in Wasserman Schultz's Florida distri district in two weeks. Of course, that was from June of this year, but dang, this site is just full of it. And I'll just leave it at that from your news. Let me go check out Wake Up World because <laughs> since I'm really having fun with this, Let's see how to really have fun. Um, okay. I found one that I might like. I really, really did. No. 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 So. Come on. Three foods that look like the organ they heal. Now, see, this looks like something that could be really interesting. Unless it, I scroll down and I find asparagus. <laughs> and then I'm going to be really concerned. Whew. Okay. So. Um, nature, which makes nothing durable, always repeats itself so that nothing which it makes will be lost. This is according to Oscar Wilde. Ah. Have you ever thought about the natural laws that underpin our world? Governed by sacred geometry, organic patterns are the building blocks that shape our experiences. And they show up again and again, begging to be recognized, understood, and utilized for the benefit of mankind. Cool. It is an unmistakable fact that the natural world tends to repeat itself. In other words, there is nothing new under the sun. So like the swirling patterns seen in hurricanes, seashells, and spiral galaxies, nature has a way of creating signatures that surface repeatedly across people, places, and things. Early physicians took notice of these natural phenomenon and created a pharmacopoeia that centered around the concept that like affects like. Substances that look alike were considered intrinsically connected and believed to possess similar natures. Medicines were developed based on the belief that the qualities of one would harmoniously relate to and thereby enhance and heal the other. This idea has stood the test of time. It was originally called the Law of Similarities. The idea later became known as the Doctrine of Signatures, credited to Renaissance physician and alchemist Paracelsus. I know, I butchered that name. So this doctrine contends that Earth is governed by the microcosm-macrocosm principle, as within, so without, and as above, so below. These herbal pharmacists took visual cues from the flora, and if a plant resembled a part of the body, that was an in indication of healing properties for that body part. Signatures presented as similar textures, shapes, and colors, and were considered benevolent signs that the divine or from the divine that mankind could easily interpret. So, Pomegranates. They are prized for possessing numerous regenerative properties, many of which bear striking similar or strikingly similar signatures to the human system they restore. The deep red, astringently sweet juice of the pomegranate has been clinically studied to increase the health and vitality of our blood, which, yeah, it is a very deep red. And in 2014, a study in the Journal of Applied F um, Physiology, Nutrition, and Metabolism found that consuming pomegranate extract 30 minutes before exercise enhanced the diameter of blood vessels and increased blood flow. Hmm. A group that consumed pomegranate, 
pomegranate juice also noted delayed onset of fatigue during exercise, as well as a significant increase in post-workout vitality. Pomegranates have been known worldwide as a symbol of fertility. Aha! <laughs> Thanks in part to their resemblance to human ovaries. Okay, I hadn't, I didn't see that correlation. <laughs> Amazingly, pomegranates not only look like human ovaries, but they produce some of the very same hormones, um, estrone and testosterone, and have shown promise in the treatment of menopause, although the treatment of menopause has been scratched out because if you say that, then the FDA jumps in and gets all nasty ass with you. Apparently, epithelial tissue refers to the thin layer of skin that makes up the connective tissue which lines the inside and outside of the body. And flat in shape and tightly packed together, these epithelial closely resemble the clustered red seeds inside the pomegranate. So, does that mean that it's also healthy for the skin? <coughs> if you've ever tried pomegranate juice, you probably noticed a clean, astringent effect it has on the inside of your mouth. Ah! This is where pomegranate's benefits for epithelial tissue are on display. So it must be very healthy for the tissue, the gingiva, and the inner lining of the cheeks. Cool beans. And for, apparently, your throat. So when you drink pomegranate juice, this same cleansing effect that you taste and feel in your mouth is also occurring in your arteries. Okay, I gotta drink more pomegranate juice then. That's all there is to it. I like pomegranate juice anyway, and I love pomegranates, but okay. Drink more of that. Good for you on multiple levels. Um, flaxseed is the next one. And flaxseed looks very much like epithelial tissue that they heal and are musial Okay, I'm not going to butcher that one. I'm just not going there. So much like the epithelial tissue in our body, which produce a slippery protective mucus coat known as that word. <laughs> uh, glycocalyx. All righty. You guys really need to make words a lot easier to pronounce. That's all there is to it. Apparently, flax has been consumed by humans for thousands of years. Well, yeah, okay. They've also um, made garments from flax. Um, let's see. And it has many therapeutic uses that are well documented. Um, ancient texts herald flaxseed and the rich, lustrous oil they produce as healing for the skin, useful in fighting fatigue, and as a powerful anti-inflammatory, among other benefits. Modern dietitians talk about flaxseed's high lignin count, referring to the isolated part of the plant that was identified as a powerful antioxidant. So ingesting flaxseed oil has been shown to speed wound healing, by stimulating collagen synthesis and giving credence to the historical value for skin conditions. Cool. And science keeps adding to the already long list of reasons to prize this wondrous plant. Because apparently it also works to help with obesity, bowel disease, diabetes, kidney disease, cancer and tumors, and cardiovascular disease. Cool. Okay, and walnuts. Okay, I bet you can't guess what walnuts help with. I obviously need to eat some more walnuts. <laughs> walnuts may be the most poetic of all signatures when it comes to resembling the part of the body that they nourish. It is impossible to deny the walnut's similarities in, to our human brain in shape, texture, and composition. I'm going to have to take their word for it because I have never actually seen brains. And I'm not, that's not exactly real high on my priority list of something to see either. 
apparently right down to the biohemispheric brain of the nut. Uh, yeah, you could call me a walnut, I guess. The rich and healthy fats walnuts are known to have a dispro disproportionately high amount of are specific the fatty acids or EPA slash DHA omega-3 alpha linolenic yeah those ones they apparently the brain requires those for optimum health I wow I just should not have gone there tonight I really shouldn't have <laughs> Apparently, studies show that walnuts also support the development of more than three dozen neurotransmitters within the brain. Cool. I really do need to eat more walnuts. These neurons enhance the development of neural pathways, which help to ward off age-related cognitive decline associated with Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Hiccup. So... Yeah, I need to eat some walnuts. Um, moreover, walnuts contain well-known neuroprotective compounds such as gallic acid, vitamin E, isomers, melatonin, folate, and polyphenols. And these are all brain-healthy effects. Um, okay, so are these brain-healthy effects mere coincidence or is it the walnut's appearance... A clue so obvious, we would be nuts to overlook it. I'm thinking we would be nuts to overlook it, and I'm thinking that I was nuts to even try and do this tonight. <laughs> Why do you guys put such big words in all this shit? We learn an awful lot about the future by studying the past. And to properly understand the doctrine of signatures, one needs to look past the surface and seek to understand the categorical nature of things. This ancient magical science still has a lot to teach us about good health. In the words of famed herbalist Matthew Wood, signatures represent configurations of energy or patterns in, in plants, and these correspond to similar patterns in people. So we're not looking for a superficial resemblance, but for one that operates on the level of essence. By taking cues from the natural world, we can enter into a new golden age of mutual validation, where ancient worlds and modern science meet to confirm each other, amplifying the awareness that natural self-healing is the only sane path toward a health care. And yes, that is why it's no longer called the health care system. It is called the disease management system. Because they are not interested in caring for your health. All they're interested in is managing your disease to their profitability. <laughs> yes, raisins for Vinny. There you go, for frumpy I hadn't really thought about that gara pomegranate oh they do they grow like weeds aliens uh, da -da -da -da. and yes flax is yummy I'm catching up on the chat over here. Okay, let me put this over here in the effing site as well. Finally, finally something that I made it halfway through <laughs> without totally fee-buddling it. <sighs> we'll just do this and this and this, yeah. Okay. Um, and I am going to go back to Wake Up World and see Spiritual Middleman. Okay. 
The previous article was Five Signs You're Out of Spiritual Alignment and Ways to Rejuvenate Your Connection. I'm just plain out of alignment with my brain today, obviously. It has been one of those days. <laughs> and yet, I jumped on the radio like, what the hell? I know what I'm doing. Sure I do. Sure I do. And y'all put up with me. That's what really... And you know what? I just need to go here. Yes, they actually did, Frumpy. They changed it to disease, disease management. Um, okay. I went over here to the Daily Haze, and I'm really not seeing anything over here that's just really grabbing my attention either. Hmm. Nope. So I'll just move along from that one. What is Zoffel? Don't want to go there. Um, and I'll just check out Cracked. Because I do have just a little bit of time left. And shit, what the hell. Uh, chefs prepare fancy fast food. Really? What is fancy fast food? Apparently, three professional chefs, as well as the chef from McDonald's. McDonald's actually has a chef. Wow. They teamed up for an event in New York City where they were tasked with making traditional junk food into gourmet delicacies. <laughs> Apparently, to counter the negative attitudes toward its food, McDonald's held a chef event dinner at the 360 restaurant in Tribeca featuring dishes made by nationally recognized chefs using basic McDonald's ingredients, elevating the drive through experience to fine dining. Are you kidding me? According to the people who were sampling the food, it was actually quite tasty. Well, <laughs> you know, you put lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig. Um... So let's see. Oh, I'm scrolling down and looking at some of these. And wow, that is taking Mickey D's to a whole new level. Although uh, a Bloody Mary with a strip of bacon in it doesn't necessarily sound bad. Um, yeah. Fancy schmancy McNuggets. No. Just because you put glaze over it and some orange slices beside it and a little bit of parsley on top, that doesn't make them anything less than Chicky McNuggets. <laughs> wow. <sighs> I have got to be in a totally weird vibration right about now. So what is Gara? Hmm. Oh, it's an acronym for give a rat's ass. Ah, thank you. Give it. See, and I just tell people that I'm out of gas, which is means, which means I'm out of give a shit. Okay. Let me put this over here on the F and site. Mickey D's into fine cuisine. <laughs> yeah. So you get to pay just a little bit more for that death food. Okay, death food. Wow. Is that like an oxymoron? Mm. I haven't been able to eat Mickey D's stuff for years because it's just ick. Ick. Okay. Um Okay. Kane w 
West, or Kanye, Kanye West, wants to shut down Pirate Bay, but uses it himself. What the hell? Did I see right the other day that Kanye West and Kim Kardashian are going forth and propagating again? Really scares hell out of me. Mm, those two should not be making more. Oh. Oh. Okay. One more try. Okay. This is just to let you know that, yes, the universe is letting me know. My show has gone to the shitter today. It's just gone from bad to worse. <laughs> from worldnewsdailyreport.com. I am not kidding you. This is right at the top. A drunk school principal defecates in front of students during Pledge of Allegiance. Wow. Apparently this was in Springfield, Ohio. <sighs> Andrew Whitmore, 53, was visibly under the influence of alcohol when he decided to throw down his pants and defecate on the schoolyard in front of bewildered students and school personnel. Whitmore also embarrassed himself even more after losing his balance and falling to the ground in his own pile of feces before eventually being carried away by local police officers. He started yelling something about Trump being a racist pig and a fascist cunt or something, one of the students told local reporters. Wow. <sighs> That is <coughs> just messed. Apparently, he later admitted to police officers that he had spent the night drinking and smoking crystal meth. Hmm. He said the situation with Trumples and the national anthem had really pissed him off and that he didn't remember doing the things he'd done. He allegedly had a blackout and does not remember defecating in front of the whole school. <laughs> <sighs> he was arrested on charges of public intoxication and faces six counts of obscenity and could face up to 18 months in jail. Whew. Well, now that I've made it through that torturous... <laughs> oh, this has been a tough one. Let me tell you. Thanks, y'all, for putting up with me. Wow, this has been a long day. And thankfully, it is now done with. So, I will be back on Friday for the Freaker Friday edition of the Rocket Chair. But until then, y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening. And, uh, yeah, I will try to uh, maybe compact whatever the hell it is I got going on here <laughs> to where it's... Aye. Once again, thanks.